We made it back to the house. We drove about 25 minutes and this thing rode like a dream. It tracked straight, it rode smooth. I suspect it's probably because it weighs a little more than the old one. It also has uh, much lighter springs. The old springs were like six or seven leaves and these I think are four, four? Yeah, these have four leaves on them. So it just rode tremendously better. Um, and everything just seemed to work well. I still have the broken brake drum, little tabs broken off. It's been about a week. I've been trying to find a new one. I have had zero luck on that. I'm just gonna keep looking and hope that somebody parts one of these out. Um, my powder coater is going to make it right and redo another one uh, if I can find it. Or I may try to find a welder to see if I can find someone that's comfortable doing casts and they can put those tabs back on. But for now, I'm just gonna keep moving forward. It towed fine. It doesn't have a lot of weight on it. So as it gets the full weight of this on it, I wouldn't wanna drive it without that fixed, but um, we're gonna go with it. So today's project is to get this thing decked. We're gonna get the Advantech subfloor on here. This is, it looks like OSB or plywood. It's not, it's, uh, it's a resin filled OSB basically. Uh, if you're not familiar with Advantech, I would look it up and check it out. It's an awesome, awesome product, and um, it it will never swell. It will never change dimensions due to moisture. Uh, it's just a, a much better product than the plywood that was on here. Um, it's expensive. It weighs a little bit more than plywood, but in my opinion, it's worth it because I'm not putting a belly pan on, so this will protect the bottom of it. I haven't decided if I'm insulating the bottom or not, so at this point, um, this, this could be and probably will be exposed to, to moisture. So um, before I do anything, I want to template the corners of the camper and make sure that the curve that I figured is going to work in the, the five inch corners that I that I mitered on the ends of these. Once I've confirmed that that's definitely going to be good, we're going to go ahead and start gluing and screwing plywood down. I'm just a little hesitant to um, to actually permanently attach anything until I double check that. I probably should double check that before I finish this thing, but um, I'm going to check it now. I think I'm good. But if I'm not, I'd rather make the modification now and touch up the paint than do it once the ply was all on there. So we're gonna grab some cardboard and we're gonna make some templates. Okay, so all I did was I took a piece of cardboard, I set it under the edge of the camper, I drew a pencil, and then I cut that with some scissors. Really simple. When I hold this on here, uh, what happens, is kind of what I expected to happen based on the original. There's a small corner here that it just sort of doesn't cover and it's the same on the passenger front here. I knew this when I made this, but what I didn't want to do was bring this corner back another full inch and do this because I felt like I was compromising even more strength. Um, there's quite a bit of flex in that aluminum and so I think what's going to happen is we're just going to pull it out and let it come around this and then we'll probably come up in here and try to put something here to kind of protect this a little bit. Um, maybe a piece of double stick tape or something so it doesn't rub the paint off driving down the road. But both sides are pretty symmetrical, so we're gonna go with this. We'll deal with the back when we get there, but the back was a, a tighter curve, so I don't think it's gonna be a problem. Uh, absolute worst case, we'll come in here with a grinder and we'll grind this front corner down, fill it with weld again, and then um, have to touch up the paint. So I hope that doesn't happen, but I think it'll work as is. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this first piece of plywood cut, uh, kind of come up with a process here because we're gonna glue this and screw it down. I've done here I've cut this first piece I've got the front corners angled or curved rather and I've clamped two blocks onto the front and that's gonna allow me to lift this up with one hand and put glue down with the caulk gun on the other once that's in we'll start running some screws into this make sure this first piece is perfect and then we'll just start cranking them out We're making some progress here. We've got a few sheets on, but I'm running into a problem here. I don't know why. All of my beams are on 48 inch centers. The first one is a little bit less than 48 to account for the three quarters of an inch extra at the front, but everything after that's 48. The problem is if I 
come even close to using to using the tongue the way they want, which I didn't up here. I've got a huge gap up here. Um, it still runs short. See, that one's a lot bigger, of 48 inches. So I just decided, all right, I'm just gonna have to waste it. I'll get in the extra sheet. I'll cut this one longer than 24, and then I'll keep going. Problem is, even if I start with this next, by putting the tongue right on that, I mean, it's barely on there. By the time I get to here, I'm pretty centered. By the time I get to here, I'm coming toward the front. By the time I get to here, I'm off again. So I keep having to cut sheets just to, to keep them on the ribs, which is getting pretty frustrating. So I don't know what the deal is here. This stuff is supposed to work on 24 inch centers. It says it's self spacing in this direction, meaning that gap is determined by the tongue. So there's about an eighth inch gap there, which is what it should be, but it just doesn't line it up. So a little frustrated here, you know, I cut this one. I think I'm gonna have to waste another one and go wider than 24. Um, just to get back on track because if i if i leave this like this with the tongue on it that's barely on so i'm gonna have to cut the tongue off of one and then cut it wider i guess and i guess i'm just gonna have to run it so the groove is right on the edge and the tongue will support i don't know it's not it's not ideal i'm not i'm not real happy about this something's something's not right here well, i figured out what it is i just went online did a little looking around and apparently i'm not the only person that's complained about this these Advantech panels only have a coverage of 47 and 5 eighths. I have no idea why the heck they would do that. I wish I had known that before I spaced all these because now I'm going to have to cut and not use a tongue and groove on some of these just to get it wider than, uh, than what it actually is. So I'm going to have to waste at least one sheet, probably two sheets to make this work. Unfortunately, I bought what I thought was exactly enough. So I'll run a couple more here, get what I can, and then I'm going to have to run to the store and get some more. down to the last sheet here i had to run to the store and get one more because of the weird spacing issue uh but we're good and it was only 40 bucks so not too big of a deal but since we're down to the last one i haven't really shown you guys exactly what it is that i'm doing here i figured we would do this one in real time and i'll show you guys kind of what we're working on so this trailer is 92 and 5 eighths of an inch wide and so on just about all these sheets except for the one between the wheels first thing i'm doing is cutting it to that size now i've been cutting all these about an eighth short just so uh, i don't have to worry about them overhanging at all and that's been working out pretty good so now what we're going to do since this is the last sheet is i'm going to get this tongue set into the last row here and i'm going to go underneath and mark the back of this so i know how long to cut it Looking good there. We'll grab a piece of cardboard. We'll go over to the trailer and I'll show you guys how I template the corners. Okay, so we're at the back uh, passenger side corner here and I want to try to replicate this approximate curve. Now, there's quite a bit of flex here. Like I was saying up front, the little bit that it's off, I don't think it's gonna be a big deal. Uh, we have to rebuild the structure of this whole back wall. I mean, it's just shot, but I didn't want to do that until we had this floor done. So anyway, what we're going to do is come in here and I'm going to find the, the factory edge of my cardboard and put that along the, the side. Just kind of tuck it in here. And then I'm just going to slide this out until it's fully outside of the camper. And then we'll just take a pencil and then mark the curve. Okay, we've got our template here, and so uh, the next step is going to be to cut it out. So I'm going to take a pair of scissors and just follow the curve that we drew. It's interesting, it looks like we're going to have a very similar situation. It's just a little bit of the steel sticking out. So it's clear to me that I probably should have done those corners a little differently. But I think we're going to try to make it work. Okay, 
Okay, so we're glued and this thing's in place. Let me show you guys how I'm screwing these down. I've got these self tappers. They're number three Phillips stainless steel. It's a 410 stainless steel. I really like the 410 ones. They seem like they can take some abuse. Um, this is a kind of a tapered head on the side, flat on the top. So my goal here is to get this flush or below the surface of this. So in order to do that, I've got a quarter inch drill bit, which gives me some clearance for this to be able to spin without lifting the wood. I've got a half inch countersink. I'm not using the full width of, uh, and then I've got my impact driver. So to speed things up, what I've been doing is doing uh, a few steps at once. So I would drill a few different holes, come back with the countersink. And that gives a place for the head of the screw to go. You can check it by kind of holding the head there. As long as it's close, it should drop in there. And then finally, we use our impact driver to run the screw in. Now, when I started here, I had a smaller drill bit and it was lifting the plywood up, which isn't very helpful. These heads are plenty wide to hold it. So we just went with the bigger hole. Okay, well, I think that's it for today. That was a good day's work there. It took, uh, I don't know, six hours or something, and including the trip to the store, so not too bad. Um, the next step is gonna be to get this thing underneath. We got a little prep before we can do that. There's still some carpet attached to the bottom of the other. There are some pieces of wood underneath that have to be replaced because they're just shot uh, or just gone because of how rotten they were. And then unfortunately, the fenders are gonna have to come off. Um, I put them on before we primed, but um, the wheel wells were not salvageable and the rivets that hold the fenders on go through the uh, wheel wells. So in order to be able to build something that is gonna work, uh, I think it's just gonna be best to take that out. So hopefully tomorrow we'll do that, get under there and just, just prep everything and start the process of setting this thing back down and hoping it fits.